Hi folks. In this video, I'd like to talk about, let me get some things arranged here. Richard Dawkins's The Blind Watchmaker excerpt. The Blind Watchmaker um, is a book that Dawkins wrote several years ago. Now, Richard uh, Dawkins is an English ethologist. An ethologist is someone who studies human and animal behavior. Also an evolutionary biologist and writer. He's well known for his criticism of creationism and intelligent design. Dawkins writes that animals are the most complicated things in the known in universe, and complicated things deserve a very special kind of explanation. And then he asks, why did they come into existence, and why are they so complicated? An airliner came into existence because humans built it. But the systematic putting together of parts to a purposeful design is something we know and understand, because we have experienced it firsthand. Now, each of us is a machine, like an airliner, only much more complicated. We are designed, actually, he asked the question, were we designed by a skilled engineer? This, of course, is Paley's question. And the answer, Dawkins says, is no. Now, almost everybody throughout history believed the conscious designer theory, and many still do perhaps because evolution is very widely misunderstood. Now he grants Paley that his argument was made with passionate sincerity, and it was informed by the best scholarship of his day. Paley did not know about um, natural selection, evolution. But it is wrong. Good. The only watchmaker in nature is the blind forces of nature. Natural selection has no mind and no mind's eye. It has no plan for the future, no vision, no foresight, no sight at all. It is a blind watchmaker. The living things are too improbable and designed to have come into existence by chance. And in that, he agrees with Paley and respects him for his answer. <clears throat> um, Dawkins says that he probably would have believed the, the intelligent designer theory before 1859 when, uh, when uh, Darwin came out with uh, his, his first books on uh, the origin of species. Let's see, uh, living things, okay, good. Darwin's answer is uh, that it came about through step-by-step -step transformations from simple beginnings, so that each successive change was simple enough relative to its predecessor to have arisen by chance. The cumulative process is directed by non-random survival. Okay, so consider the waves and pebbles on a beach. This is an example of a system that automatically generates non-randomness. So there's order in the way the pebbles and the rocks on a beach are ordered because of the way the waves wash in so that the smaller pebbles go further than the larger rocks. It acts as kind of a sieve. Right? If you're familiar with a sieve, probably as a colander in a kitchen, uh, where the smaller things stay on top and the larger things go through. Another example of a very large sieve would be uh, the solar system. Now in step-by-step -step selection, the entities selected are sorted once and for all. So this is his example of if you gave a monkey a typewriter and gave it some enormous amount of time, uh, it would take much too long for a monkey to come up with, uh, you know, some Shakespeare. Maybe eventually it would, but um, you're looking for a step, a single step kind of um, selection with this. What you need is a cumulative selection where the entities reproduce, where the results of one sieving process are fed into a subsequent sieving, which is fed into another sieving process, 
and so on. Then the end product of one generation of selection is the starting point for the next generation of selection over many generations. And this is how he gets the uh, program that he puts in place to bring about through random generation of letters on his typewriter, um, <clears throat> typing into a computer, where when he hits the right answer, it keeps the right answer there. So it keeps generating random letters. And when it hits the right letter, it keeps it there. And so then it doesn't take very long at all to get the whole sentence that way. It's a random, uh, I'm sorry, it's a non-random process, but it uses randomness in a kind of a selection procedure. So the selection procedure in the computer example that Dawkins uses is, the, um, is when you get a letter right, you keep the letter in place. The analogous um, selection procedure in nature for evolution would be when a, uh, an organism gets a trait right, meaning that it increases its ability, its adaptability to its environment, then it holds it in place. So that's how it doesn't take as long as it would take a monkey to type in uh, Shakespeare. Living things are the main examples we know of that uh, participate in cumulative selection. He says, if evolutionary progress had, had to rely on single step selection, it would never have got anywhere. Now, Dawkins argues that many modern theologians have given up believing in instantaneous creation. The evidence for evolution is just too overwhelming, but many evolutionist theologians smuggle God in by the back door so that they allow him some supervisory role, right? So God oversees or put in place or his method of creating life was to uh, use the process of evolution. Uh, and we can't disprove beliefs like these because if, the, if there's no evidence that there is some supernatural force behind the evolutionary process, then there's no way to prove it and there's no way to disprove it. Uh, if even in principle there's no evidence uh, available but Dawkins says they are superfluous. In other words, we don't need the, um, the, exp the supernatural explanation to explain how complex complexity came about from simplicity. In addition, um, it assumes the existence of the main thing we want to explain. Now, if God is lying behind this and was at the beginning of this whole process, well, this is a complex uh, organism indeed. We're trying to explain complexity, but a deity is certainly a complex organism, if anything is. So it's already assuming complexity uh, when that's the thing that we're trying to explain through natural selection or through uh, the religious examples. So if we want to postulate a deity, capable of engineering all the organized complexity in the world. That deity must already have been vastly complex in the first place. The theory of evolution by cumulative natural selection is the only theory that is in principle capable of explaining the existence of uh, organized complexity. The odds are against the spontaneous existence, the single step, spontaneous existence of eyes and deities as well. I hope this video has helped your understanding of this very interesting article. Thank you for your time and attention.